Hello everyone, I am Dr. Kavita Kovi, Consultant Obstetrician, Aster Women and Children Hospital, Whitefield, Bengaluru. So today let's discuss about abnormal uterine bleeding. So before we go to the topic of abnormal uterine bleeding, let's first discuss about what is normal uterine bleeding. So the normal menstrual cycles. So normal menstrual cycles anywhere between 24 to 38 days if you get your periods, it's quite normal. So this is the new definition. That means you can get your periods anytime between 24 to 38 days. So how long should the period be? Maximum is about a eight days, right? It cannot prolong more than that. Give or take eight days is okay. If you have severe flow, that is subjective. Basically, heavy bleeding is very subjective. We also collaborated or corroborated with the uh, CBC. That means the blood count to know whether you're bleeding heavily or not, because it's very subjective. One person may feel it is very less. Some, some of them may feel it's very heavy during their periods. So we only analyze it by checking the uh, blood count and seeing whether your it is matching up to your uh, history, right? So when we talk about that, this is the normal bleeding. So if you have bleeding in between your cycles or if you have bleeding which starts very early or if you have bleeding which is very late then we call it as abnormal uterine bleeding. So it can happen to any woman. It can happen to children or uh, we would say adolescents or uh, it can happen to uh, regular women in the reproductive age group or it can happen to premenopausal women as well and especially women going towards menopause. So again abnormal uterine bleeding has been divided into adolescent bleeding and again the reproductive age group and again menopausal, you know, premenopausal women. So the adolescents, we, we take plus or minus more into consideration. If they bleed once in 40, 45 days also, we are okay with it. And we always say plus or minus nine days. So we always take that. Same thing with the menopausal women, we or premenopausal women, plus or minus nine days is absolutely okay when they uh, bleed. So generally, if it's very early, we try to treat. If it's a little late and they are regular, they're not very heavy, we generally do not try to treat that kind of bleeding. In reproductive age group, it is very important for the women to get pregnant and we also want to understand what is happening with her to guide her towards her pregnancy or because it's a long term issue, so we try to sort the problem, right? So when it comes to abnormal uterine bleeding, take into consideration the number of days you're getting your period. If it is crossing more than eight days, if it is crossing 38 days, please contact your doctor. So what could be the problems? So in adolescents, it's mostly hormonal problems because their axis is not yet formed. The hypothalamic pituitary ovarian uterine axis is what we call it as. It's too immature and it'll take time for it to regulate. So we give some time for the patients and sometimes it's polycystic ovaries. We get a little bit of life changes into the place, lifestyle changes, especially we want them to exercise, we want them to cut down their junk and things fall into place for adolescents. But when it comes to reproductive age group. So what could be the problems? There can be fibroids, there can be polyps, okay, there can be cysts in the ovaries, again the polycystic ovaries causing hormonal imbalance, uh, thyroid problems. So contacting a doctor at that time is important. So each problem will be uh, solved, you know, when you have a specific problem identification and solving the problem at that time will be important. Coming to the menopausal age group, uh, premenopausal age group, again, these are the same kind of problems, but you may have something called as endometrial hyperplasia. So that means the endometrium can become very thick at that point of time. That can cause trouble. Uh, you can have adenomyosis, which is very common at that age group. So uh, you can have a polyp again, a fibroid. All this will be dealt with each specific problem will be dealt with specifically. So how do we identify this? So as I told you the history, uh, we go by the history and then we may advise certain blood tests and an ultrasound is very essential for us to check whether there is any problem going on in the uterus. Otherwise we will not be able to find out the cysts in the ovaries or the fibroid, its location, any polyps in the uterus. We will be able to diagnose only by an ultrasound or sometimes we may even ask for an MRI if we are not able to identify the problem through the ultrasound, right? So 
each one, each of the problem is dealt with in a different way. For fibroids, you may or may not require surgery, so don't panic and think that the fibroids require surgery. The polyps may have to be removed, so that can be done endoscopically, so you don't have to worry. Even the fibroid uterus, if at all you require surgery, it will be laparoscopic surgery, so uh, most of the times we deal with it routinely. Until and unless you have a contraindication for laparoscopy, we deal with it laparoscopically. So uh, here at Asta, uh, we have a lot of uh, laparoscopic instruments which are up to the world class instruments uh, where we are able to achieve it without any problem and no comorbidities. Uh, also we, we look at the uh, morbidity and mortality so it is very very less with the uh, laparoscopy. Patients are able to walk uh, the very next day they are very comfortable with laparoscopic surgeries. So uh, for fibroids if we, the patient requires laparoscopy however big we, we, we can get it out through laparoscopy. The same thing with polyps. The polyps are inside the uterus, so we require an endoscopy that is hysteroscopy. So we do a lot of hysteroscopic surgeries here where we go and resect the polyps and probably your problem is solved. And some of the times the women have a septum inside the uterus. That means the uterus is broken into a little bit in the center. It has got a septum or a bridge which has to be broken or uh, you know cleared. Otherwise she may not be able to conceive. So that also is possible by doing through hysteroscope. And some of the polyps from uh, they arise from the cervix, from the internal part of the cervix that also may be required to go and clear out with the hysteroscope because we may have to burn the base of it, which is possible only with the hysteroscope. And uh, here we do a, do a lot of hysteroscopic surgeries, and they are painless. You will be under anesthesia, and as I said, the morbidity is very less. You will be able to walk out of the hospital within two to three hours of the surgery, right? So abnormal uterine bleedings. If you have any complications or any problems pertaining to the periods, kindly contact the obstetrician or your gynecologist. And at ASTA here, we are fully equipped with laparoscopy and hysteroscopy. Kindly make use of it. Thank you.